YouTube videos have been recently turning into movies, and one of the people who is kind of making this change is Ryan. So Ryan, tell us about yourself. Um, all right, so where do I start? Um, my name is Ryan Ang. Uh, I have a YouTube, I own a YouTube channel with about 90,000 subscribers. Um, and I started when I dropped out of school because of COVID. Um, universities were getting a little bit too expensive. And I went to film school and I realized that film schools, you don't really need film school nowadays. You could make films online. Um, a lot of the people that you've interviewed make films online. They do a beautiful job of it. Um, yeah. YouTube is the new university. It's the new university for filmmaking. And if you look at the history of filmmaking or of any industry ever, um, whoever is successful, whoever uh, really makes it to the top of this industry, take the path of least resistance. And in my opinion, the path of least resistance is on YouTube. So I took the initiative to drop out of school and um, to focus on YouTube. I was at 800 subscribers. Parents weren't really happy about it. They gave me about six months. I can months. imagine. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, they're still not quite happy about it, but they gave me about <laughs> six months to um, to make it happen, to make this thing work. And after those six months, I would have had to go back to some sort of school because what happened was that I decided to stop signing up for classes and not apply for housing. So I couldn't have gone back to school if I even wanted to. I had to have gone to some community college or some sort of other school. On the very last day of uh, winter break, which is when I should have been going back to school, my video, one of my videos started going viral. And now I'm just going full in on this YouTube thing. My parents are kind of okay with it. Um, and yeah, that's a little history of, of how I've gotten to where I am. Why do you think that video kind of like, I mean, you kind of go like viral? And why do you think like people subscribe because of that video? Because a lot of people like have viral videos, but don't get like much subscribers off of it. The story, 100% is the story. And yeah. I think that um, what's happening on YouTube and what will happen 10, 20 years down the line is that companies like Netflix and companies like Hulu are gonna be in some big trouble because they're gonna be creators like yourself. And like myself, Thank you. and like Yes Theory, that are going to be these these creators are going to be the next Netflix. They're going to be the next yes great fil filmmaking platform. Um, totally forgot what the question that you said, but um, no, it's okay. You could like go off track. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's kind of my uh, opinion. Oh, you, you asked me why the videos got me a lot of subscribers and everything. It's, I think for sure, because of the story, I had this prediction that anyone who finished the film uh, subscribed to me because of the, the, the character arc that came along with this story, the progression yeah. of someone going from this, you know, not understanding something to actually understanding something and people want to follow your journey. I think that's why people love Casey Neistat so much. That's why people love movies so much. So yeah. if you are able to do that on a personal level, you know, YouTube is the most personal th thing you can get, at least right now with technology, right? It's me talking straight to you, straight to the camera. So it doesn't get more personal than that. The stories don't get much more raw than that. And I think that's why uh, people subscribe to me. And that's why it went viral. I think there are a lot of other reasons why it went viral, but that's definitely one of the reasons why. Kind of like because you kind of like stopped YouTube for a while. Um, yeah, man. And then you kind of came back to it. Um, after, before uploading like what you did now, did you kind of like study the algorithm like some other YouTubers did or did you just like upload them normally? I, I was uploading and studying the algorithm at the same time. I know there are people like Dream uh, and I'm sure you know who Dream is, who actually yeah. <laughs> who actually studied the algorithm before he posted a single video. Um, I thought that it would be a better strategy just to jump straight into it and figure it out. Yeah. And I think the progression of my storytelling 
progressed along with my progression of understanding the algorithm. So actually currently, um, you know, it's June 9th right now. Currently, um, my channel is under some construction because we're trying to build a team around it and tr just trying to build uh, the channel to support the algorithm and to cater towards certain audiences. Um, yeah. So I've been learning the algorithm along the way. And I think that I've gotten to a point where I do understand it quite well. Of course, not as well as people like Mr. Beast, people like yesterday, <laughs> but I, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Yeah, by a team. I'm not just put like, sorry, I interrupt you, but like, no, I'm not just posting things uh, just to post things. You know, I'm not posting things mm -hmm. without a strategy behind them, which is what I think a lot of YouTubers are currently doing, even well-known popular YouTubers. Um, but there's a whole strategy behind everything that I'm trying to do. But of course, I'm going to fail a lot along the way. So. Yeah, I'm pretty sure like everyone like fails um, at least a sure, couple of times. And a couple they... times, millions of times, dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, and like by a team, um, do you mean like a group of people? Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you want me to go into it? Sure. Okay. Okay. Because this is really exciting. Um, I've been really inspired by people like Mr. Beast, people like Yes Theory that really treat this thing not as. Uh, they treat it like a startup company, like a Silicon Valley yes. startup company where, where they reinvest everything back into the business. It's, it's insane, right? It's, it's crazy. It's not just a personal yeah. blogger anymore. And I, I love that because it creates a long lasting, uh, it creates a long lasting business, right? It creates something that wins in the long run. Maybe not right now. You're kind of, a lot of people, that are doing this are broke right now, but in the future, you're investing in something that might m like matter a lot in the long mm -hmm. run, right? So um, I'm building a team of people to help me produce content faster and to help me understand the type of content that I'm trying to do. Um, just to give you a sneak peek on what I'm doing, um, something very similar to what you're doing, interviewing and asking some of the most uh, influential and some of the brightest minds of uh, older generations yeah not okay. just YouTube, but of older generations and I truly want to understand what it means to grow as a person and I'm, I want to ask some of the most asked questions of our generation I don't know if you I think you're on the borderline of like Gen Z and Gen Alpha which is like the generation yeah I actually don't know um I was born in 2008, so. I think you might, you're, you're like the borderline of. of, of yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I, for Gen Z and Gen Alpha, I want to provide a, a, chan a YouTube channel that can help inform uh, our generation on maybe things that we're confused about. I think there's a pandemic going on, not of COVID, but of mental health issues. There's a pandemic of, of, uh, you know, I guess there's, there's a lot of people trying to conform to social norms and conforming to uh, just listening to what other people are saying, not listening to themselves. And I want to help, hopefully break that barrier and, you know, get people to become lifelong learners. That's the goal, at least. Um, and basically, my series is supposed to facilitate that by asking questions, interesting questions. Yeah, that um, sounds very amazing. Um, I went super off track, but um, <laughs> no, I'm, hiring, I'm hiring a team to help me contact people and essentially to help me write these stories because I can't do these things alone. Um, just like I'm sure Mr. Beast can't do his stuff alone. It'll take him a year to make one video if he did it alone. So um, I think that's where YouTube is headed to, uh, like full on business full-on businesses which is crazy it's insane but it's so cool if you want i might be able to help getting like the contacting people i appreciate that man i'm gonna need that help dude <laughs> it, it's, it's just like mostly just like cold emails but yeah how many cold emails do you do before you get one interview what's the ratio um i'm actually not sure but like um i had to create a different email account um uh -huh. to like start sending emails because 
my like there's like my I was full of space on my Google account because of yeah. the amount of emails I've sent. Um, so really I made cool. like a new Gmail account to like. I love that. That's so but, cool. Yeah, and but like, if you keep on scrolling down, like, you you only see like many people uh, send emails to. You can't see like the like uh, uh, probably like five hundred people I sent emails to. Um, that's that's amazing, crazy. dude. That's amazing. I love that you're doing this at twelve years old. That's insane. Thank dude. you. And like every day, I'm like, oh, this person would be like interesting to get on my podcast. Um, that's why I was with you. I, I would see one of your videos, and I was like, I didn't see the email the same day. It was like the day after. I was like, I should interview this guy. I really like his videos. Bro, I, I love that man. I love that mindset. It's so cool. That you is do. the most. That's the most badass thing I ever do. When I was twelve years old, I don't know what the hell I was doing. I mean, I don't know. I don't think anyone <laughs> at twelve years old is is really doing what what you're doing right now so that's really cool thank dude. you one of the reasons i really like your videos um i thought i just didn't mention this um there's this youtuber i like um his name is jared west um sure. I'm, I'm not sure if you know him but his videos are, his videos are are like movies um like he spends so so long making his videos um he's made like tons of different channels of videos he had tons of different channels he's grown like yeah he has multiple channels with a hundred thousand subscribers um, mm, okay, I see but yeah, his, his videos are like movies, basically. But yeah. I got it. I see him. Yeah, I, I've seen his videos before. Yeah, I've seen okay. his videos before. That's super cool, dude. Yeah, he is. He was very nice to interview. Mm -hmm. So, you you had another channel. Um, so how did you like kind of go from like making kind of like Minecraft videos on that channel to creating a new channel? Um, well, how do you know that? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's, um. <laughs> So Bro. how do you go from that to like basically movies and like stuff like that yeah. on your main channel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I didn't always want to be a filmmaker. I've always wanted to be a YouTuber though. I wanted yeah. to be a YouTuber since I was 11. Since I was 11, I've been making videos. I remember for the longest time, I'd be so scared of talking to the camera that for a year, I held off talking to a camera until I was 12 years old. That's when I started making YouTube videos and I started making these silly. I don't around my age. Know, I don't even know if you remember. Yeah, 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 around your age. Yeah. I don't even know if you remember, but I would be making videos like the cinnamon challenge and the jelly bean challenge. These little, these old, old, old type of videos, not the challenges that yeah. people are doing today, but like really simple, you know, webcam you know, uh, type of stuff. I love that stuff. Niga Higa, what are, uh, yes. Freddie Delby. I don't even know if you remember them, but. I remember Niga Higa and like Fred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, those guys are, were awesome. And those guys were what inspired me to go down this video path. And so I did anything I possibly could have done. And I did it for all the wrong reasons. I just wanted to be quote unquote famous, right? I wanted this, I wanted this, uh, yeah. I wanted this lifestyle. And so I tried everything. I tried Minecraft. I tried, I, that wasn't my only channel, dude. I've had maybe five, six YouTube channels. Um, I even made Vine accounts. Um, I think when I was 15, my Vine account had 13,000 followers until it, uh, you know, until okay. it, uh, yeah, shut down. So um, honestly, it wasn't that I was into filmmaking. I was into YouTube and the Minecraft channel was because of, I just wanted to be a YouTuber. And actually mm -hmm. I, I must've made about 600 videos from age 11 to age 16. Right. Wow. And I think that's where I got my editing skills. And especially I started forming my, true editing style and not style but like my true editing skills when yeah. i was making my minecraft videos uh my minecraft videos is where i actually got to read emotions and cut at the right spot so that people would laugh at that specific scene right and yeah like it, it went it so it was minecraft. right um, exactly perfect cut screens right exactly and it was because of minecraft and editing for so long that, that when I ended up 
doing making films i remember taking my first film class in high school when i was 17 16 17 years old and that's when i started getting into i guess you can say more serious type of stuff and that led me down the path of uh, wanting to become a filmmaker rather than a youtuber and then COVID happened and i was like man uh, let me try at this youtube thing again and seeing the creator space and the way that it's forming right now it's I'm, I'm really, really so crazy. I'm really, really thankful that I discovered it. I don't think I would have discovered it if it wasn't for, um, honestly, if it wasn't for COVID and if it wasn't for all of these things that forced me to do something a little bit more creative. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so you, like you said, you kind of quit those channels. Um, and you made like a whole video on this. Um, I'm not sure how much of like how many of my subscribers have seen that video. Um, but could you like summarize why you quit those channels? I just gave up too easily, dude. Yeah. I gave up way too easily, especially when I was young. I, you know, I, I just wanted things for the wrong reason. Again, I wanted to be famous. So I was, I was going to try something and if it didn't work out for four months i move okay. on to the next thing yeah and i think the difference between then and now is that i i legitimately have a purpose uh for doing what i want to do I, I legitimately want to improve people's lives to make people feel a certain type of way with my films and i want them to remember my video i don't just want it to be another fast-paced youtube video that you binge watch and yeah go about your day or you just continue binge watching videos. I want you to stumble across my video and I want you to remember that video for the rest of your life. And I want you to remember it because it inspired you in some way. And I think because of that, it's got me continuing. And especially through the difficult times, I think having a purpose um, keeps you from giving up. Yeah. I feel like even though something doesn't work out, um, it probably didn't work out because it's kind of it wasn't your thing to do um and if you like doing something that you actually enjoy doing and doesn't work out in the beginning like for me youtube like it was working out but i wasn't getting really like consistent like views and subscribers until last year um but that was like you do, dude you're getting you're you're interviewing some cool ass people dude yeah you're doing some really cool people i wouldn't even care about the views you're getting knowledge from yeah. <laughs> people that have are two times older than you that's insane exactly that's awesome. yeah, yeah. So. and like before i cared about the views i was like yeah i kind of did what you did i, I kind of did like commentary videos and i kind of did like tons of minecraft um and then i found the podcast and even though some episodes haven't done so well like it really doesn't matter because it's like the amount of people I get to talk to and like the stuff they say is just like makes it so valuable in my opinion you're yeah the the fact that you're getting this much knowledge and the fact that you could look back at this stuff and other people can look back at this stuff from you that's that's amazing in itself so so you're doing a really good job don't even Thank think you. about the numbers you know I feel yeah like 12 years old you don't even need to worry about that stuff you know just exactly enjoy life grow up you know like like grow up through um speaking to these people you know mm -hmm. so that's awesome it's awesome dude and another reason why i'm kind of like happy i kind of started earlier because like you started you really early <laughs> yeah very early um but like the good thing about it is you can see like my improvement in videos and my improvement in just like myself um yeah. and yeah like something i kind of like regret doing i deleted like from my second video mm -hmm. to my first gaming video which was even in the, even though it was one month it was 300 videos i mean walking yeah. around my house just talking about random stuff and i'm so mad i deleted them that's like one of my biggest regrets um, I, I did the same thing yeah i really? did the same thing because i cringed so hard at my past videos that I remember I when I switched um, computers, I decided not to keep the data on the last one because I just couldn't. So all of these, all of those like 600, 700 videos, I probably only have about 50 of them 
um, because I deleted so much of them. So. Yeah, I still have like some of them, but only those like 200, 300 are the ones that I don't have. But like, I do have like the one hour video. So it was like my, me and my friend just like goofing around in Minecraft and like- It's gonna be a lot of fun to look back on, dude. It's gonna be a lot of fun to look back on. I'm very excited for when I'm older to just like, I'm like dedicate a a whole day to just like watching all my old videos. Yeah, it's it's fun, it's fun. I can imagine. Yeah. Um, I, I like, I still do that anyways. Um, yeah, same yeah. here. Dude. I watch my Minecraft videos all the time. It's just the funniest stuff. And it's like, wow, like, I had so much fun, like, recording these. Like, these times were, like, right? so, like, more different. <laughs> Look, man, all that matters is, like, having that fun. Having fun. Learning, mm-hmm. learning, progressing, you know, becoming a lifelong learner. I think that's the most important thing, so. Yeah. And I feel like the good thing if you're doing YouTube wrong, you naturally progress, you naturally get growth, and all that stuff that makes you happy. Right. Exactly, man. Exactly. What is the process of making one of your videos? Man. Okay. So I gotta, I gotta go in depth as you want. I've learned all depth. of it. Let me, let me go in depth. But um, the videos that I'm making right now, which no one has ever seen them because I don't even know how to make them yet. And um, we're still figuring it out. But the this interviews? Is, huh? The interviews? Yes. This is essentially what the process of this is essentially what my filmmaking process looks like. Well, I'm making documentaries. So it's very different from making um, actual film itself or an actual narrative film. I, I treat my documentaries a lot like I treat my films in general a lot like the scientific method I'm sure you've learned about the scientific method in school you know like coming up with an idea hypothesis oh yeah Yeah. okay so if you look at the scientific method um you've got the uh you got the initial idea coming up with the topic coming up with the question that you want to answer then you got the hypothesis, which is your educated guess on what's going to happen when you conduct the experiment. Then you prepare, uh, you know, get all the equipment together and you come up with a game plan of how to execute the experiment. OK, so yeah, now that you have a game plan, you execute the experiment, you go out and. You figure you gather your data right after you gather your data. Now you review your hypothesis. See if your hypothesis is correct. If it's not correct, you figure out uh, what went wrong. You figure out how you figure out what the true answer is, right? And then that's when you write your paper. That's when you write your analysis. And then that's when you get your paper published. That's in the scientific world. Now put this into the filmmaking world. It's very, very similar. So let's just say, um, can I kind of curse? Is that sure. right? Yeah. Okay. So my next film is about whether you need to, it's kind of, I don't know. My, my next film is whether you need to be an asshole to be successful or whether mm-hmm. it's easier to be an ass. It's easier to grow wealth when you're an asshole. Right. So um, let's just say in this sense, I have this really interesting question. Now let's try to tear it apart. Uh, let's come up with a hypothesis. Do we think that you need to be an asshole to be successful, right? Uh, so we come up with the hypothesis and then we come up with the game plan, right? So the hypothesis for me is going to consist of the outline of the film. What I think is going to happen in the documentary It's going to include um, the themes of the film, which is the moral of the story, you know, slow and steady wins the race, really simple things, universal lessons that everyone can learn. Um, And then topics that I want to talk about. So let's just say, do you need to be an asshole to be successful? Um, Maybe I want to talk about business. Uh, Maybe I want to talk about entrepreneurship, or I want to talk about the science behind being an asshole, right? So those are all the little topics. So I break all of this stuff down and I predict what, I predict what it takes to, or what the progression of the film is going to look like. 99% of the time, my outline isn't going to be this story. 99% of the time, it's going to turn out completely different 
from what I expected it to be, right? So now that I have the outline, it's time to gather all of the materials that I need to make the film. Equipment, I need to email people, I need to cold email people to interview, I need to go on adventures, I need to figure all this stuff out, right? So now that I've gathered all the materials, enough people have said yes to my film, I go out and actually shoot the whole thing. I gather answers from experts, I gather um, all these little things and um, come back with all of this footage, organize it, write it into a story that makes sense. Um, and then I come back with, uh, I come out with my film. All of that together, you know, all the writing, the editing, and the several revisions that I have to make, the contacting. My prediction is that it's going to take me about two and a half months to make one video. Uh, which is crazy because nobody on YouTube, <laughs> yeah, nobody yeah. in their right mind would spend two and a half months on a YouTube video. I wouldn't be um, able to. I'm willing to go through that effort to do it. That, but I need to hire people because two months, a video every two months is not going to cut it. So what I want to do yeah. is overlap a lot of the films. So when I'm editing, my team has already moved on to the next film, has already moved on to the researching process. And when I'm done, they're already ready to shoot and I'm going on and shooting with them. So that's the process that I'm trying to perfect or I'm trying to understand. It's very, very difficult. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to do. That's the process that, of how I make my films. Yeah, wow. Now like, that's very different from how I kind of make my interviews and do like my videos. Mine's a lot more simple. I'm like watching YouTube, see someone I want to interview, like find their business email. If you don't have one, go on Instagram, send them a DM or send them an email. Um, I kind of like a template that I sometimes, so it's depending on the person. Um, and send, wait for them to respond. If they respond, get the questions ready, then like record. That's, that's, that's a part of what I have to do. Um, but yeah. because I want to make a whole story out of it and, uh, it's a lot more complicated. and cut down the, uh, not much, it's not more, it's just different, you know? Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah it, it, that's Yours definitely are more documentaries and might just like a conversation. Um, right, right, right. And, um, I did exactly what you did, um, uh, today, actually, whatever you just said, emailing people, trying to find their Instagrams, trying to find their whatever I spent all day doing that today um today was my first day with uh the intern my intern actually and figuring out how to manage people mm -hmm. is something that's also very difficult and something that I'm still trying to figure out um but uh with that being said things are moving a lot faster trying to figure out things a little bit more so it's really cool it's really cool stressful but fun yeah and this like I really like like talking to people so kind of like the build up like getting the questions ready gives it like I love it yeah like it it makes me want to work better towards it because I want to like the interview or like conversation to be as best as possible yeah for sure man for sure so you kind of mentioned in the beginning um you dropped out um of school yeah. Yeah. Um, you deny the only college you apply to. Um, mm -hmm. So do you think like school is necessary? Depends on what you want to do. For podcasting like you, you're already doing it. Of course not. You don't need to go to journalism school for it. You don't need to, you just need to do it, right? That's, that's yeah. literally, it. you just need to do it. Um, for doctors, lawyers, stuff like that, of course you need to go to school. Yeah. Um, but I think the, the, the big problem is that the, the, the bigger problem isn't that, you know, I guess people don't know that they don't have to go to school or whatever. I think the big problem is that people are convincing themselves that they need to do an occupation that they're not truly passionate about. I think the, I think a lot of people are being doctors when they don't actually want to be doctors or they're being lawyers when they don't actually want to be lawyers and they're, and they're convincing themselves that they have to do this. But 
maybe their true passion is actually to go make YouTube videos or to go make a podcast, which you obviously don't need a school for. But the thought yeah. of not having to go to school is unthinkable for some people. It's unthinkable for me until I actually like made the jump. So uh, to answer your question, uh, for artists, for for people like yourself, uh, if you want to do podcasting for the rest of your life, no, you don't need to go to school to be successful. Like, yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. Uh, and also, school isn't the only source of education. This is a source of education. Having exactly. conversation, um, watching the right YouTube videos, watching the right movies is also a form of education. Mm -hmm. um obviously you have to just be aware of what videos you're watching and what movies you're watching and consuming but uh no you don't have to go to school to be successful or it's not a necessity mm -hmm. it's only a necessity if the passion that you have let's just say you're at, want to be an educator doctor whatever uh, that of course you have to go to school for so yeah and there's like so many like online learning platforms like monthly like skillshare that like have everything you need on there basically the only barrier between you and learning what you want to do now is you like it's it's so cliche but it's true yeah <laughs> if you want to learn something it's right there right in front of your face you know so no school is not necessary also school is getting old school is getting old like you said like mm -hmm. online classes um that might be the future. I mean, you just look at what happened with um, COVID and how hard mm -hmm. it was to for teachers and the educational system in general to adopt to what was going on. It was just, yeah, you know, it, was, it was a wreck. But yeah, it's um, I don't know. I I, I don't want to say anything wrong, but for me, I know that I don't have to go to school. Be six, uh, to to be successful and all that stuff yeah i definitely agree with that um so kind of going back to the interview thing like documentary thing you want to start doing um who is like your dream person to like have on that video like dream, the dream person that's alive alive or dead or like anyone both of them anyone, anyone. So alive, um, dream person alive, man. I don't know, but I've, I thought about this question a lot uh, for who I would want to interview, like anyone in the history of anyone. It'd definitely be Walt Disney, for sure. He's been yeah. such a huge inspiration for what I want to do. Or someone like Princess Diana, who is so philanthropic and so empathetic. Um, and I want to understand how she went through what she went through and same with like you know walt disney and how he was able to build this goliath of a company and something that people mm -hmm. um, truly truly uh, resonate with as for right now there's so many people that i would love to interview same um, <laughs> yeah at this very moment um you know i'm 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 obsessed with youtube right now and i'm obsessed with who is uh, it <laughs> yeah yeah so I don't know if you you probably don't know this person, but uh, I would love to interview Daryl Eves. He is yeah, well, I know who he is. He's known as like the godfather of YouTube statistics. He's like mm -hmm. the godfather of YouTube creators. He is he knows everyone that is anyone in the creator space, and I just want to pick his brain yeah. about about like how this whole thing works and like where he thinks the industry is going to go and what he thinks about, you know, whatever. And he's, you know, Mr. Beast's mentor. He's a mentor mm -hmm. to a lot of these top, top creators. So he would be someone that I would love to interview right now. Um, I also want to interview him. <laughs> yeah, he's amazing. I, I don't know who else. I, I want to get back to you on that question, but I guess Mr. Beast, of course. Obviously. Uh, <laughs> I would love to interview him, but yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't really, I haven't really thought about this question for any farther than like the people that I want to interview, like at this very, very moment, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like if you would have asked me like the question, like alive or dead, 
I would not have said like Walt Disney, but I feel like that would be a very good like interview to like pick. Walt Disney would be so much fun. Yeah, but like like a little kid. Yeah, I would have just never thought of it like to pick him. Um, But for me, it would kind of be like difficult for me. I want to interview like Elon Musk for some reason. Elon Musk. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I feel like I would love to interview him too. Or like Nikola Tesla or like Thomas Edison, like the big Freddie guy. Mercury, someone like that. I feel I like, like Freddie Mercury. Yeah, that one's a good one. Yeah, that one's a good one. Have you read um Daryl's book? Yeah, I read it two, three times. I highlighted every single part of the book. I read it back and forth and did more research on it. And um, yeah, I did as much as I possibly could have done to extract anything I could have extracted from that book. It was it was really good, although sometimes he's quite cheesy. But you know that I think that's just his personality. So yeah, I that too. Like right now, I'm listening to Sean Cannell. Ah, uh, uh, I like, don't like that book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening like to uh, an Audible. Um, I want to read that first. Too, then Daryl leaves. Um, Daryl listen Daryl Eves is I hate to say it but Daryl Eves is just so much better like just uh-huh. the amount of understanding that YouTube the YouTube economy isn't isn't magic it's not this thing where you have to predict like it's predictable it's like it's just the human behavior you just have to understand the human behavior mm-hmm. and that was just so cool to have someone come with this sort of confidence of understanding and it was just I, I loved it and I know that if I follow what the book it's a cheat code dude it's a cheat code so mm-hmm. so do you think I should read it 100 percent, dude 100 right. um you gotta read it you gotta read it it's, it's like a must do for anyone who wants to be a youtuber okay We'll definitely read that. <laughs> I don't know if any book could top that. Honestly, like it's so good <laughs> like, in terms of information. Yeah, yeah. A- I feel like that's an excuse for me to read. Like, because like, bro, you gotta read more. Listen. No, listen yeah, to. I read. Um, I prefer listening. Um, I prefer listening too. But yeah, you got to because you know what? Mm-hmm. Um, I love this quote, but it's like you can't, you you can't make all the mistakes in life and reading books Mm -hmm. is the only shortcut that you possibly have in life it's the only shortcut that you have in life is reading books Mm -hmm. because you could because let's just say like a book from Elon Musk it's all of his mistakes all of what he's gone through in life in one book it's of course like you, you have to go through go through his experiences but like you know what I'm saying like yeah 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 it's a books are the only cheat code in life mm-hmm. in my opinion yeah you could consume it in many you could consume it in many ways um i guess books media in general is a great way to uh you know get forward in life if you w- watch the right movies again if you read the right books so mm-hmm. i feel like my mom and dad always told me like read 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 my, my brother did too and i was like i, I don't know i, I prefer listening to audiobooks and stuff like that i was doing it then and there but then I was like, I saw other people, like my favorite creators who were like, oh, like, like reading blah, 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 the book, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's like, I'll start reading yeah. a little bit more because of that. And yeah. start yeah, listening yeah. to audiobooks a little bit more. For sure. For sure. You should read The Third Door. I feel like you would love it. So the we're listening to The Third Door. Uh, it's a lot about cold, it's, it's about cold emailing. It's about a guy. It's about a guy just like you who's trying to um, who's trying to get advice from some, you know, uh, really influential people. He's interviewed people like Bill Gates at the age of 18 years old. He interviewed wow. these amazing, amazing people. So, yeah, um, to look into. Is it by Alex? Alex Benign. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah um do you know if it's like only physical i don't know audio get that get the audio book you're gonna like it get the audio book i got the audio i definitely will couldn't stop listening to it (laughs) yeah i'll tell my dad right after this (laughs) for sure dude um anyways so 
you like who in, kind of introduced you to editing was it like a specific person youtube just youtube time. time just youtube it was mm -hmm. it was me trying to make youtube videos my first edit was on movie maker then i spent probably the better half of a decade like half of a decade learning iMovie and perfecting iMovie and then it was only recently maybe four years ago uh no yeah yeah around four years ago that i started using premiere pro yeah i really like premiere pro i also use it's it. good it's good just out of curiosity which would like do you prefer like movie maker iMovie um final cut or premiere pro so i prefer well in between movie maker or iMovie i prefer iMovie premiere pro or final cut only because i've never I've never really used Final Cut. I'd have to choose Premiere, but because of like the versatility of Premiere, you could use, there's so many applications that you could use. You could use After Effects and everything. Yeah. But, um, the subscription I, is annoying. Yeah, it's slow. It's really slow, um, especially because I use a Mac. It'd be better if I use Final Cut, but I don't. And I've gotten so used to Premiere at this point. I don't know if I could switch too lazy to yeah it's not even too lazy i just don't know if i could relearn everything that i learned on on premiere you know um just all the shortcuts and everything so uh-huh yeah and like watching hundreds of hours worth of like tutorials like right right like hours of like messing around like no no thank you yeah 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 um especially right now it's like i just need like i i i'm i think i'm pretty good at premiere pro let me just stick with that so i can yeah. just make all my stories you know in, in your videos you can tell you're good at it i appreciate it man thank you no problem so where do you see your channel in five years or if you don't see that far into the future kind of like one year two years in five years in one year i see my channel at a million subscribers definitely and in five years, I see my channel as, this might sound super pretentious and everything, but I see it as one of the most influential. It's going to scare companies like Netflix. It's going to, mm -hmm. the films that I'm going to make is going to match some of the films you see on Netflix and Disney Plus. That's the goal. Is I did YouTube out of the fear that the films that I love will no longer be here because it will be consumed by the attention. You know, everyone is, all these great companies, they're fighting for time. So, you know, they're fighting for your time, YouTube, Netflix, and whoever spends the time on, whoever can get people to spend the time on their site the most, wins right and right now in my opinion from everyone that i've asked from especially from my generation i feel like 99 percent of them say that they spend more time on youtube that scares me as yeah. a filmmaker who loves indie films who loves these meaningful films and are realizing that less and less people are watching them because they're watching mr beast and they're watching youtube so let me bring these indie films that I love. Let me bring these meaningful films that make people cry, that make people feel so touched that they want to go out and do something. Let me bring that over to YouTube because I don't see it on YouTube right now. Very few people are able to do it. Very few people are able to create that character arc, that story that makes people truly feel something, that makes people truly take action. And I want to do that. So where I see it in five years, I, I see it as one of the leading YouTube channels, at least in the filmmaking space, at yeah. least in the storytelling space. But I don't want to be associated with like the, the quote unquote filmmakers right now on YouTube, like Film Riot and all of them. I, I want to be a space where people where you know, it's universal. It's not just for filmmakers. It's for people like yourself. It's for people that just want to feel something. It's not just for filmmakers. <clears throat> yeah. Um, like something I've noticed, like a lot of my friends are not watching 
YouTube as much. They're watching really? like TikTok. TikTok. That scares like, me, bro. What? That scares like, me. How? It's they watch YouTube a lot more. I don't know why they prefer TikTok. I like TikTok, but I prefer YouTube it's a, more. It, it's those it's those short like quick fixes of 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 stuff and that's going to ruin so many not, not saying that it it's good stuff but like i i want to i want to do something a little bit more i want to yeah change how people i want to change how people feel i want to change people's lives for the better uh and i think the only way you can do it is by slowing down having mm-hmm. conversations talking to people um for me in my opinion that's one of the only ways that you can truly progress um so yeah yeah and it's like making people's attention span a lot shorter which is going to like hurt youtubers that make long videos especially like me with my podcast some of them are over 30 minutes there's going to be there's going to be an audience for it man trust me i think yeah I it think will that, i think that um hopefully i think we're moving towards a place where People will enjoy long form videos. It's just that our generation has not gotten accustomed to making long form videos. Hopefully I can bring that to them. And that, that's the goal of whatever I'm trying to do. Um, but it's tough, it's tough. Yeah, um, would you like to stick to like 30 minute videos, um, 10 yeah. minute videos yeah. or not like hour long videos? I'm going to make hour long videos. I'm gonna make two hour long videos when I have the budget to do so. But that's not going to be for another maybe eight, 10 years. I wasn't expecting the answer, <laughs> to be honest. I was like, really? yeah, like my, my next video is going to be like four, 45 minutes long, like one hour long. But those yeah. are going to be, those are going to be around, I'm going to make 30 minute to tw- 10, 20, 30 minute videos right now. That's still, that's the attention. Still very long. <laughs> that, it's still very long, but that's, yeah. the, that's the maximum attention span of our generation currently. Yeah. <laughs> but I will continue expanding them, making them longer and longer and longer. The goal is to be making full on films on YouTube, full on Netflix quality, the, like Florida Project, La La Land type of stuff on YouTube. YouTube is going to be very soon. I, I could like. It's going to be. And like the past two years, you could like tell how everything has changed. Like now, to get big, you could have to make big video ideas, like talk to this big. You don't need. No, 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 no. I don't think you do. I think that. I think that you need to view YouTube videos as like as product. If you have a good product, you. I think everyone thinks that you need to go bigger and better, but in my opinion, you just need to have a really good idea that no one has done before. Um, Mr. Beast was able to find a niche where no one has done it before. You look at Casey Neistat, no one made vlogs like he did. That's why he got to where he was. Yeah. Uh, You look at, you know, Yes Theory, no one's made travel videos like Yes Theory has. You know, if you can innovate and basically create a new product for people to watch, that's when you get a million subscribers. It's not when you have top guys going on your channel. It's not when you have millions of dollars. Anyone can have millions of dollars. People can make crap out of that. But Mr. Beast, when you give yeah. him a million dollars, he's gonna make some good stuff. Genius. So yeah. I, for example, don't have a camera. I only have an iPhone. This is all I have. This is all I make my films with, unless I borrow wow. something with my friends. I was if if you can tell good stories with a phone, I think you know there's nothing to worry about. Um, yeah, and like create good stuff, create original content. I know people mm-hmm. cringe at that, but if but you have to make a good product. You know, the iPhone. If the iPhone looked just like the BlackBerry, it would have gone nowhere because BlackBerry is dominating, but because the iPhone was this new touchscreen phone, it was, it was a computer all put into this phone. That's how it became, that's how it, that's what made Apple a trillion dollar business, right? Yeah. But you have to treat YouTube the same way. The YouTube is an economy. How are you going to bring the best product into the market? You know, yeah. a lot of trial and error. I feel like, 
phones, there is an option to film like 4K camera, like now. Yeah. Which is you like don't need crazy. a good camera. You don't need exactly. you don't need a, you don't need a cam- DSLR camera, bro. Yeah. Now this might be better than a camera, like than some cameras. It it's better than some cameras, right? Right. And it's no excuse unless you don't have a phone and Wi-Fi. But I'd like to think that most of your audience does have a phone and Wi-Fi. Exactly. You can create stuff. It's mm-hmm. no, there's no excuse. Even with the iPad, like if you have, a, mm-hmm. or with just a computer, or with maybe just even an Xbox, like there still is ways to make video yeah, exactly. stuff on that. One hundred percent. Like it's so easy to like make videos now. Um, that it's like crazy. My it's favorite. easy to it's easy to get your hands on things. It's still not yeah. easy to make. It's still not easy to make good videos. Exactly. Never gonna be easy to make good videos. Mm-hmm. That 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 comes with you. That comes with the actual person mm-hmm. itself. But it is easy to make like mediocre videos, and, like bad videos. That's what I'm referring to. And it's easy to reach like people on the other side of the world. Like, exactly. Exactly, dude. I'm with you. Yeah, um, so kind of like we're talking about how YouTube is kind of like evolving. Um, where do you like, what are your best favorite things about YouTube and least favorite things about YouTube? My favorite things about YouTube is that anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. My favorite mm-hmm. thing is that it gives power to the individual. You no longer have to go through a producer to make a video. You don't longer have to go through a producer and an executive producer and a film studio to make something and share it with the public. YouTube, on YouTube, you're, you can be a one-man party and do that. That's what I love about YouTube. What I don't like about YouTube is that is the out is the way that the algorithm is is kind of built Mm -hmm. although i don't see any other way that they can do it because the way that it's built is like the people that click on your video like if more people click on your videos if more people watch all the way through um they're going to promote it right but the thing is that's promoting a lot of clickbaity content a lot of content that is fast paced, easily, easy to ingest, but doesn't provide much value. Now, that can be the YouTube algorithm itself, or it can be the people on YouTube um, doing it. I'm not blaming Mr. Beast for it, but he's a large part of the reason why um, YouTube is the way that it is right now, fast paced. There's a, there's a, there's a formula to, to making a, a, a viral YouTube video, make something that people are going to click on, have a target audience, edit very quickly. Right. Um, so again, the films that I want to make, the films that I love, the slow burning films, where is that going to be in 20 years? I, I don't know. It scares me to think about it. But also that's why I'm on YouTube. I'm on YouTube to hopefully make that change to slower content that people like in your generation and my generation will enjoy. Yeah, I like 100% agree with that. I agree with everything you said. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, that's basically like most of the questions I had. But we have only one more question left, which is, do you have any advice? Well, we're talking about advice like this whole time, basically. Um, Like just, like just do it. But like, ignore like the just do it things like oh it's always to do it now like after that what would you say is the biggest advice what is the biggest advice Hmm. i'm thinking about what type of advice i would give myself right now and it would be i'm sure most of your audience is young whether that's in their 20s or teenagers or people that are younger than you slow down slow the f down (laughs) Uh, yeah you know it's we live in a world that is so fast we make assumptions so quickly 
we try to get as successful as fast as possible and we try to spend our money as fast as possible and we live from moment to moment without really truly cherishing uh every moment i don't do it enough i don't do it nearly enough i refuse to hang out with my friends a lot of times because i want to be successful as fast as possible i want to i don't you know i i want to move out of the house as fast as possible i want to do all of these things and um it's because of a lot of the media that i'm ingesting it's because of a lot of all of that stuff um so my advice would be to slow down and to truly truly think twice about a lot of the things that you consume online about um because i think that um we we just don't self reflect enough we we don't don't promote this type of thing enough uh, it's this go 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 type of culture uh, especially in, in in you know our generation so enjoy it man enjoy life like, yeah breathe it in i remember i was dropping off my friend from work we were working all day on these youtube videos and it was sunny outside it was beautiful outside um the sun was setting and it's the, it was the most cliche scene ever the little kids playing outside <laughs> and i just turned on my music and i was just looking out at whatever was out there dude hold on sorry my friend is texting me don't uh, worry <laughs> one of my friends called me like the middle of this interview um yeah but um what i'm saying is is um you you can't you can't speed through life man you gotta like stop yeah. and like really enjoy these moments i like to do it through and act like a child dude act like a child like mm -hmm. i like to do it through you know just listening to music and looking at you know life just go by me i've gotten into legos recently i've gotten into legos again because for some reason it's what? really i was never I know, into right? legos weirdly like bro uh, it's I so heard much why. Fun. it is so much fun like it, i always liked the characters and like build like very small stuff well no yeah. only the characters but yeah it brings back the kid in me um so remember that you only have so much to live for have a purpose in life and just slow down because you'll get there you'll get there uh, but you can't you can't get there speeding through everything and yeah. I guess that's my biggest advice that i need to listen to myself um and i think other people in our generation really need to consider yeah and sometimes you hear stories oh this person was like in this room coding facebook instead of like hanging out with his friends and that's why it's successful like no you, you don't need to do that just to be successful you could like exactly. go out with your friends like i was literally i went off the interview and i went directly with my friends um and i went late to the interview because i was with my friends because like i thought it was at, at 6 30 yeah um yeah, but yeah just really like enjoy it enjoy life and i mm -hmm. i'm i'd like to think that i'm one of the luckiest people in the world to to have realized this at 20 years old Think about it. I can. I'm gonna relive my life three more times, maybe four, to to have known that, um, to to know that I'm going to cherish the little moments in life and truly take it in, and not take them for granted, is is so exciting. And so that's what I'm trying to do more of. And that's what I want this series that I'm making on YouTube to 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 be more of. So yeah, yeah. i'm very good. excited for that series of what you said like thank you man brings my hopes up and i'm just like yeah, i can't wait till the first video comes glad, out dude. i can't wait to what for whatever you're doing it's freaking amazing thank you really means a lot um but yeah um thank you so much ryan for coming on the podcast this really means yeah, a lot and yeah. before we end is there anything you want to promote um youtube channel ryan Ang films uh Ryan Eng, last name is just two letters ng that's that's pretty much it yeah yeah um there'll be in the description everything 
So if you found this interesting, check them out if you haven't already. And yeah, I'll see you next episode of the Nikocast. Mm-hmm.